All right, so recently Joe Rogan had Dwayne The Rock Johnson on his podcast, who is obviously a highly anticipated guest, but this turned out to be a very underwhelming episode, and I honestly wasn't expecting much from this podcast, but still my expectations were way too high. You know, when I heard The Rock recently talked about how he's approached by the political parties to run for president, I figured Joe would at least have some good questions about that, and it did get brought up during the podcast, but Joe really had nothing to say about it. He didn't ask any questions. Well, he did ask. He's like, wait, are you talking about for president? That's the only question he had. He'd even ask him if he's thinking about it. He didn't ask him who approached him. He didn't ask him what it was like or what they had to say. Instead, he just sat there laughing like Jimmy Fallon, who The Rock told the same story to, I think, like the night before. But at least Jimmy asked him if he's actually thinking about running. Joe would even do that. And a few years ago, he would talk about The Rock running for president quite a bit, and he said he would 100% vote for him. You'd vote for The Rock. <laughs> I'd vote San for him. I'd vote for him. I San would Andreas. get behind him 100%. I would. I'm all in for The Rock. As good as he is about everything else in life, he'd be great at president. But then when The Rock's on his podcast, he doesn't have much to say about it, and he basically just turns into Jimmy Fallon. So one of the parties came to visit me. Oh, no. At the end of last year. <laughs> Asking uh, for, for me to run. Oh, Jesus they, Christ. I mean, it was... For president? For president. Wow. It was, inc first of all, incredibly surreal. Right. Because I was the guy, you know, who was wrestling in flea markets right. years ago. <laughs> looking for free corn dogs and hot dogs and shit. Um, selling my headshots for five bucks trying to make money. And then all of a sudden I'm having that conversation. But no, it was just incredibly surreal and so wild. But also so incredible that they had all this data that would that they had said if this happens here's the result and, oh wow and it was really deep and then i started to think again surreal because that's never been my goal <laughs> right i i appreciate it and i'm not too long ago uh, you know years ago i was wrestling in flea markets for 40 bucks per match hoping that Hey, I just want a free corn dog at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now here we are years later. Would this be something that you would ever uh, consider? I, I think down the road, for sure. And it's funny, one of the only interesting things he has to say about people asking him to run for president is they showed him some analytics that said he could probably win. And it's like, what, they just show him his Instagram following? Like, the guy has 400 million followers. He's one of the most well-liked celebrities. And it's really no secret the guy would have a decent chance if he decided to run. And they've been telling him he could win for around six years now. Like, this clip is from Jimmy Fallon's show six years ago, and he's saying the same exact thing. That, uh, you know, there's a national poll that, that just came out this yeah. past week. And like, that, by like, act by real, like real news channels. Yeah. Like real news channels, real national poll that brought together Republicans and Democrats and saying that I would beat Donald Trump if we had an election today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> to become president. And I was, I, I've really been blown away, right? And, and I just, it's so flattering. And I think, you asked the question why, I think it's because, you know, a lot of people want to see a different leadership today, or I'm sorry, not different, but a better leadership today, uh, <laughs> right? A better leadership. And it sounds like he is seriously thinking about running, and him and Joe actually get into some political issues during the podcast, which I'll get to here in a second. But first, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a subscription service that lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. And with each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply so you can try out different colognes or perfumes before you're committing to a full-size bottle. And every month you get to pick what you want to receive so there are no surprises. And it's a great way to try out more expensive fragrances. Like with some of these, the full-size bottle can cost up to three to $500. And they have over 600 different options. And they carry brands like Gucci, Prada and Versace and I was really happy with the ones that I chose I got Versace Eros and Awaken Distilled which both smell really good and they come with description cards which I think are always pretty funny like Eros says it exudes vivid masculine energy and as somebody who just naturally exudes masculine energy, I think this scent it does do a good job of that. So if you're interested, if you want to exude vivid masculine energy, make sure you try it out over at Scentbird and use coupon code TOOLAZYTOTRY for 55% off. 
So your first month you can get for a little over $7, and it's available in the U.S. and Canada. So thanks again to Scentbird for the sponsorship, and make sure you guys check out the links below. All right, so back to the podcast. This whole thing honestly felt more like The Rock interviewing Joe. Like The Rock was asking all the questions, and it was mostly Joe talking the whole time, and The Rock just echoing whatever he has to say, and Joe barely had any questions to ask him. This is something you and I were texting about last week, is... is how can you tell the difference between the bullshit noise and the toxicity that's always out there compared to, oh, that's an opinion that is worthy of my attention. Mm -hmm. I just want to look at and and look at this for a second. How do you differentiate the two? It's difficult, right? You got to try to be objective and you got to try to be unemotional when you read something that someone's writing. Like say if someone, someone's like Palestine and Israel is a great example Yeah, because it's the tension is so heightened oh. and anything you say on one side or the other people will attack you on. Sure. And that actually is a good question from The Rock, but I think the reason he's asking that is because he just went through some controversy and I actually think that's the reason why he's doing all these appearances and I think that's maybe why he's just now bringing up the story of people asking him to run for president that happened last year. You know, I think he might be trying to distract from all the controversy he got in with the Maui wildfire fund that he started him and Oprah and they got a lot of backlash for it because they asked the general public for help and people feel like since Oprah and The Rock have a combined net worth of like five billion dollars and have access to some of the richest people alive they should have done more themselves they did donate five million dollars each but people weren't happy with that And then in early October, The Rock did basically apologize, and he's like, yeah, I understand where people are coming from. I understand it's not easy out there, and a lot of people are struggling. I'll do better next time. And he did briefly mention the wildfires and the fun that he started on Joe's podcast, but of course he didn't talk about any of the controversy, which I didn't really expect him to. But I think a lot of people are hoping that Joe would bring it up to him and not like interrogate him about it, but just ask him what he thought of the backlash he got. But of course, Joe barely asked him any questions during this podcast, and it seemed like these two were doing whatever they could to avoid talking about anything interesting. I mean, either The Rock and his team gave Joe a giant list of things that they couldn't talk about or joe just turned into the worst podcaster ever like there's so many things joe could have brought up to him that people wanted to hear about that would have made this so much more interesting but you could tell during this podcast joe was just trying to stick to the script and not ask the rock any controversial questions there was actually one moment though that i think this was probably the most viral moment from the podcast and people are like oh he called out the rock he got him yeah well it was when i was a kid you could have a republican friend like, it, it was no yes, big deal. Yes, yes. It's no big deal. Like, oh, Bobby likes George Bush. Of Who course. cares? You know, you were a supporter of Bill Clinton. He liked George Bush. Nobody cared. You yeah. know, it wasn't like, you're a Nazi. Like, I'm a, what am I, I'm a Nazi. I just want lower taxes. That's like, what, <laughs> fuck. Dude, it's, a, it's the craziest thing. I have friends who support Trump. I have friends who support Biden. I have friends. Do you really have friends who support Biden? I do. <laughs> Come well, on. Well, no, 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 no. Here's, here's what I do. I have, I have friends... <laughs> Thank you. That's a good check because that's important. <laughs> this is important context. They support the Democratic Party. I have friends who are loyal to the party. Yes. And okay. they're the progressive. Right. Yes. Loyal to the party. Yeah. Support Trump. I have friends. Yeah. So I just thought the way they're talking about this is weird considering The Rock is somebody that endorsed Joe Biden. And that was the first time he's ever publicly endorsed a politician, which I'm sure helped his campaign a lot. I mean, like I said earlier, The Rock is insanely influential. And he posted a video to Instagram to his 400 million followers talking talking about how he supports Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and he did this really cringy interview with them. Hey, CJ. Hey. Hey, Hi. Hey, guys. I I gotta tell you, well, it it is so good seeing you guys. Uh, Senator Harris, it's a pleasure to finally see you and finally meet you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to see you. I'm a huge fan of everything from Fast and Furious, all of them, to Jumanji, so thank you for your work. (laughs) smart, tough. I've seen you in those hearings. And um, in in my opinion, you are certified badass. I'm honored and thank you for that. That's a huge compliment from you. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Absolutely. Kamala, how, how how do you feel? How do we earn it? How do we earn it with our own two hands? Well, you know, to your point, DJ, I'm so, uh, it's about trust. So it's funny that Joe made that joke. Like you really have friends that support Biden. Well, you're talking to somebody that helped Biden get elected. And I'm sure Joe is somewhat aware of this. I mean, you could probably just guess. Like, if you're a big-time Hollywood celebrity, odds are you endorsed Joe Biden. 
So for Joe to act like The Rock isn't part of that group or something is kind of ridiculous, and I wish he asked him a question about it, but this podcast just seemed pretty fake, and that's why it was so boring, because these two just have too much to lose. Like, Joe probably didn't ask him any questions because he knew The Rock didn't want to give his opinion on anything, because he's probably worried about upsetting his Hollywood friends or getting canceled or something like that. Like, at one point, Joe was going off about how bad San Francisco has gotten, but how they cleaned it up recently when the president of China arrived and Joe also brought up Gavin Newsom he's criticizing him and again that's somebody who The Rock has done an interview with and I'm sure he's kind of friends with so it's like Joe did even expect The Rock to chime in at all like again he's just ranting he doesn't ask The Rock any questions The Rock actually asks a couple of questions he just keeps asking what happened to the homeless people like what they did with them which is a good question but they probably just shoveled them into the subway or something so also whenever Joe's talking about something political it sounds like The Rock has no idea what's going on or maybe he's just playing dumb that could be it because he could tell he's very hesitant to give his opinion on anything. Took all the tents out and they put fences up everywhere where the, so the people can't, can't camp out anymore. We don't even know what they did with them. I was just going to ask, well, what did they do with them? See, the, see if you can find a video of it. It's crazy. And then you got Gavin Newsom on TV who's making excuses for it. He's like, yeah, we did. Well, when people come over to visit, you know, you, uh, you clean your house up. Like, why isn't this always like this? Yeah. This is what San Francisco used to be like. You ruined it. Now we know that you could fix it and fix it quick. Now we should be really upset. As upset as people were before about the homeless problem in San Francisco, they should be furious about it now because they always had the ability to fix it to quickly. Fix it. Yes. And they brought San Francisco back quickly to safe and clean and no homeless people in the street. Now, is this temporary? Are you going to go right back to, to tents when Xi Jinping leaves? That's crazy. Where'd they go? Do we know? Did I don't know. Hit? What's the explanation? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It's wild. It's like, oh, you could have always done this? Yeah. Why didn't you do this from the beginning? Yeah. What Nordstrom's wouldn't have had to close. All those Walgreens, all those, everything's closed in San Francisco. They're all leaving the, the city. It's like... The city's a zombie wasteland, and you could have cleaned it up at any time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wild. Especially with that money. What, as you said they overpaid? Overpaid $6 billion to Ukraine. Yeah, whoops, sorry. No wow. worries. We're going to pay them more money in the future. That was the idea. Like, we'll just add it on to the, the money that we're going to give them in the future. Yeah, so what I think is going to be the biggest problem for The Rock if he decides to run for president or if he gets more political is he's going to have a tough time accepting that people are going to start to dislike him no matter what. You know, when you're in politics, odds are, like, half the country is going to start to hate you. And right now he's got this great reputation and everybody loves him. But once he starts getting into politics and he actually has to give his opinion on some of these issues, then that just opens up the floodgates for hate. Right now, everyone loves The Rock. If he became president, 40% of the people would immediately start hating him. No. Yes, 100%. No, 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 no. 100%, bro. Unify the country. Impossible. Can't be done. We love it. Oh, we they start love, digging into love, his past? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to know what's and in The being Rock's past. Mean. They're just be mean. And I honestly don't think The Rock wants to deal with that at all. And I don't think he'll be able to handle it well. Like, you could tell he just wants to be liked too much. He tries too hard to please everybody. You know, he endorses Biden and Kamala, but then on Joe's podcast, he acts like that never happened. And he's like, oh, we just support the Democratic Party. Or he doesn't even say we, he just says my friends. But I'd imagine he's talking about himself, kind of. And then also another good example of this, which I wish Joe brought up to him. I thought he'd bring this up, but of course not, is when a few years ago, if you remember during all the Spotify controversy with the COVID misinformation people were saying Joe was spreading, he eventually posted this video addressing it and The Rock commented and he said, great stuff, your brother, perfectly articulated, looking forward to coming on one day and breaking out the tequila with you. But then just a couple days later, this author tweeted at The Rock and he said, you are a hero to many people and using your platform platform to defend Joe Rogan, a guy that used and laughed about using the n-word dozens of times is a terrible use of your power. Have you actually listened to this man's many racist statements about black people? And then of course The Rock immediately caved and he said, thank you so much for this. I hear you as well as everyone else here 100%. I was not aware of his n-word use prior to my comments, but now I've become educated to his complete narrative learning moment for me. Yeah, so I just feel like The Rock is not very good at handling when people are upset with him. You know, he doesn't know what to do, so he just caves to the mob. Like, he kind of just threw Joe under the bus there. It's pretty funny, you know, he comes out and supports him, and then immediately everybody gets all pissed off. He's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know he said the n-word, like half the people in Hollywood have done. 
but now I'm educated on his complete narrative and it's a learning moment for me. It's just insulting. But he's stuck in this position where he wants to make everybody happy and it's just not really possible. And it's hard to tell what he actually believes in. Like, does he actually think that Joe Rogan's a racist and is he really offended by it? Or is he saying this because he just got a lot of hate and the mob came after him? I would say the latter, especially because he's just on Joe's podcast. But it's funny because it sounded like he would have done it sooner in that initial tweet. He's like, let's sit down sometime. But then he gets all this backlash. He's like, oh, maybe it's not time yet. I better wait a little bit. So I think he's just trying too hard to play both sides. Like I heard Patrick Bet David talking about this podcast and he had a similar opinion. One of the best smiles in the game, good looking guy, comes prepared, showman, entertaining, likable, but brother, if you want to go in this space, you have to take a position. You do. Vanilla's not going to get you into the White House. So a lot of things that people were talking to him about, they're like, well, I don't know about that. 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 Right? It was like a, either he does or he doesn't want to give his opinions on it. To me, he doesn't give me the feeling of a guy that doesn't know about that. I get the vibes from Rock that he knows. He knows enough to have an opinion on it, and he's logical enough to take a position. Um, but does he want to? That's the question. Because mm -hmm. if he chooses to run, and he runs as a Democrat, okay, do you really believe in the policies that they believe in? Do you really believe it? Or do you, you shouldn't do a poll and say, which one's going to give me a higher chance of becoming the president? The question should be, what do you believe in? Yeah. Perfect. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Great. If you believe in this, run as a center left, center right, run as a this, run as a that, instead of, you know, well, based on these polls, if you run as a Democratic ro rock, you will win 54% and you'll beat the Republican rock of four. Yeah, so I think that's also why the podcast was so boring as well, because you could tell the rock just did not want to give his opinion on anything. And he's walking on eggshells. You know, he's definitely worried about saying anything controversial or getting canceled. And Joe obviously realized that as well. And you could tell he didn't want to push it and ask him anything that made him uncomfortable. Like another thing that the fans wanted to hear him question The Rock about is if he's on steroids, because Joe has talked about this quite a bit in the past on his podcast. Like imagine the layman who yeah. thinks that, you know, yeah. The Rock isn't clean, for example. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it Does The Rock say he's clean? He has implied it pretty heavily, but he also doesn't end up in scenarios where he gets asked point blank, whereas Liver King goes out of his way to fucking lean into it and use it as like a marketing spiel. The Rock should come clean right now. He should make a video <laughs> yeah. in response to the Liver King video. Yeah. Yeah. I need to talk to you because The Rock's been lying. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, the... There's it, not a fucking chance in hell he's clean. No. Not a chance in hell. As big as The Rock is at 50? Yeah, so I would have loved to hear Joe bring this up to him, but of course he didn't, and honestly, I was not expecting him to. But once again, that's just another example of something that everybody wanted to hear him talk about, but he didn't get to. So I thought the podcast was pretty disappointing, but again, I didn't really expect much. I mean, it seems like the more famous somebody is, the more boring they are on a podcast, at least. I've been talking about this for months on Patreon, how celebrities have the worst conversations. They say nothing interesting because they just have too much to lose. It's not worth it for them. So they just sit there talking about bullshit the whole time. And I just feel like life as a celebrity is not as interesting as people thought it was. And it's funny because I saw Daniel Tosh recently started his own podcast. And on the first episode, he's like, I'm only going to interview people that I find interesting. So that means no celebrities and no comedians. All right, let's get started. I'm going to be interviewing people that I find interesting. So no celebrities, no comedians. Today, that person is my wife's gynecologist. Yeah, so I think this is pretty good because now the Rogan crew has some competition. Like, I'm sure this podcast will do well, especially if he's not talking to comedians and celebrities. I mean, that's like 90% of podcasts, and it's definitely gotten old at this point. But let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments. And also, thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys check out the link in the description to get 55% off your first month. And then also, if you guys want some extra content, I post a ton of exclusive stuff only on Patreon. I post every week a 20 to 30 minute video, and there's probably over 40 at this point. So there's a lot to go through on there, and people really seem to enjoy it. They think it's worth it. So make sure you check it out, and then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video.